Good afternoon. As I come to you today from City Hall, I can't pretend this is a normal year or a normal address. In preparing to speak with you today, I thought of the buffet of projects and programs that are the substance of the work of this local government, which we pursue every day and every year. And while I'll get to some of that in our time together, it's all filtered through the lens of everything we've experienced in this last year and all those things we've missed so dearly and look forward to experiencing again in the months ahead, whether the simple pleasure of sitting down with friends after a long day or the chance to bask in the glow of a performance at the 40 Watt Club or the Classic Center. This year, we've lost friends and neighbors, colleagues and family members, and all of it amidst the overwhelming mental and emotional fog that comes with challenge and tragedy. But despite the weight of this time and the sense of dislocation, I'm continually impressed with your support of each other, which allows us to move forward together, forward through this pandemic, forward through the need for racial justice, forward for our children and loved ones, and to demonstrate to ourselves that we can do this. As we wake up each and every day, we demonstrate that we can confront all the challenges that lay ahead, including those challenges that were here before the particulars of this last year. And as I sit in this empty chamber, my heart is full from all the Athens community has done for our collective benefit. So I want to offer my deepest thanks to everyone who's contributed of your time or labor or financial resources this year whether it's to feed others, to care for children when their parents had to go to work and you were their only option, to those of you who've assisted in keeping our neighbors housed, and to all who continue to advocate for fair and just treatment for all. Please know that your efforts are part of the self-perpetuating engine that allows us to be the loving community that draws people here and keeps people here. Special thanks to our first responders and frontline medical providers in Athens. I know how long your hours have been, how difficult it's been to provide care for others through wave after wave of illness, and how monumental your ability to get up and do it again, day in, day out. Because of your efforts and the assistance of all in Athens who've maintained diligence in the simple, safe tactics of washing your hands, wearing masks, and avoiding crowded indoor spaces, it is paying off. While one preventable death is too many, you have provided Clark County with a lower mortality rate than any metro center in the state, lower than any of the counties that touch Atlanta, and lower than any of our neighboring counties. You have been a model that has saved lives. As we grapple with the healthcare impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic, we also look at the path ahead. Along with my colleagues on the athens Clark County Commission and our deeply committed staff, we've pursued a critical set of goals. In looking ahead, we begin with the end in mind. And the picture we paint is one in which residents are well housed, healthy, educated, justly compensated, building wealth, and enjoying the natural beauty, rich culture, and camaraderie of this community that has so deeply enriched my life for these last 25 years. There are many, many layers of work underway that will get us to this place. Our community is strengthened by quality public outreach, and I want to highlight the contributions of our 16 neighborhood leaders working through partnership with Family Connection Communities and Schools of Athens. They have been a critical link amidst this crisis and will continue to be a touchstone for knowledge and understanding of ground level human needs. In addition, our inclusion office, helmed by Crystal Cobran, continues to work toward dignity for all sectors of our community, including working with residents who were displaced during the so-called urban renewal period of the 1960s and providing us with the understanding of how to do a better job today. Also critical, is our work to ensure that there's a place to call home for Athenians regardless of income level. 
our housing crisis certainly hits those hardest who are on the financial margins, but it's even felt in households that would have been considered well situated in previous times. We are in a moment that features the lowest supply of housing relative to population in this market in generations and perhaps ever. Currently, over 40,000 people commute from beyond Athens every day to work here. And while some may continue to live elsewhere, we have to acknowledge that many of these individuals cannot find an affordable place to live in Athens, given the housing crunch. To address this shortage of housing, the Planning Commission has ably responded to a charge I delivered to them 18 months ago and provided a set of draft recommendations that include targeting increased density in areas that can support growth given the public infrastructure in which you've invested in recent decades and providing new opportunities for smaller home sizes and what are sometimes termed auxiliary dwelling units or in-law suites. This work will bear fruit throughout 2021 as the draft work is refined into new code language and considered by the County Commission. We also continue to work to reimagine areas of Athens that were previously designed as segregated pockets of low-income housing. The Affordable Housing Fund, through the Special Purpose Local Option Sales Tax that was approved by voters, will provide a complete renewal for the North Downtown area that includes Bethel Midtown Village. Upon completion, this neighborhood will lose none of the affordable homes it currently supports, but will add a range of workforce and market rate homes, along with inviting public spaces, support services, and amenities. The $39 million in local funds dedicated to this has attracted many times that investment in private dollars and federal funds, with the initial round of federal low-income housing tax credits having been approved just this autumn. Broadly, we will apply lessons learned from past efforts that neighborhoods must be integrated and that in their design, we must consider more than just the countertops, appliances, and floorboards. We have to consider supports for residents in a way in which life outside the living room and home is also fruitful. Some of the areas identified for higher density development include dormant or underutilized shopping centers such as the Georgia Square Mall, the former Kmart location on Barnett Shoals Road, and the one-time Kroger location on West Broad Street. By encouraging density, we'll create more walkable environments, as well as ones that will benefit the retail and restaurant sectors nearby. Some of these areas and others are included in our new Tax Allocation District program, which will incentivize redevelopment in a manner that extends community benefits throughout a zone through enhanced sidewalk connectivity, new parks and childcare facilities, access to regional stormwater, and aesthetic improvements along key corridors. This way, rather than a new development seeming like an isolated diamond in a coal mine, it will create new energy and new opportunity throughout the surrounding area. I wanna mention one of our most critical housing needs, that of our area homeless population. In 2021 and beyond, I anticipate that we will dramatically ramp up our housing first approach to ensure that there are new opportunities to get unhoused Athenians off the streets, under a roof and into a warm bed. It's evident that underlying behavioral health and chemical use challenges can only be effectively addressed when someone isn't worried about whether they have to clear a new place in the woods tonight or whether their tent has been destroyed by a fallen limb. We all have family members who've been wounded by some of these underlying issues, so I know you share with me a desire to direct our most valuable residents to greater opportunities in life. I want to turn to our economic development work. Our economic development team, helmed by Ilka McConnell and partnering with many of you, continues to reach new heights. Significant scale work in 2020 included the opening of the expanded BioPlanet Assembly Facility featuring 250 new jobs opened just this December, and the RWDC Industries facility in May, with 200 new jobs and a $260 million capital investment. Notably, both of these utilize technology 
that was developed right here at the University of Georgia campus, leveraging publicly supported research and development for new private sector positions. BioPlanet utilizes electrostatic cleaning technology to efficiently clean spaces, a critical need right now, while RWDC converts used vegetable oil to a compostable plastic substitute with their first product to market, a replacement for petroleum-based drinking straws. I anticipate that in the years ahead, the intellectual capital for which we are a hub will continue to be a key part of our expanding economy. We are also critically conscious of the needs of small businesses, and we have provided small business supports in 2020, including $2.1 million in relief funds provided through the Federal CARES Act. These were supported through partnerships with the Northeast Georgia Business Alliance and a new joint development authority created between the unified government and the city of Winterville. In addition, we leveraged local dollars to provide a $1 million small business revolving loan fund. We also created a new key position, a workforce development coordinator to work with community partners, workforce training and education providers, employers, and within the athens Clark County government to identify workforce needs and opportunities. A project already realized in this division is the new Athens Community Corps, a program which hires and trains unemployed and underemployed Athenians to support beautification and environmental restoration projects while preparing participants for long-term skill development and employability, which will allow us to fill our own hard-to-find positions such as CDL drivers and engine repair technicians and will contribute to a stronger workforce countywide. Now, a strong residential and employment sector necessitates a high-quality transportation network. To support these needs, along with the new higher-density residential nodes, in the years ahead, we will target increased frequency on key Athens transit routes. The next round of TSPLOST funding, which will begin preparation this year for a vote in 2022, will feature a quarter of the existing TSPLOST penny pointed toward transit, which the County Commission has already agreed to in principle. This new investment in transit could yield a series of stops along corridors like West Broad Street and Atlanta Highway, in which missing a bus by a few seconds and seeing taillights fade into the distance no longer means that there's an hour to wait for the next bus, but instead a matter of just 10 or 15 minutes. Further expediting safer and smoother movement throughout the community, the rebuilding of Loop 10 interchanges at Lexington Highway and Atlanta Highway are moving forward, with Lexington under construction beginning this year and Atlanta Highway in 2023. After the period of construction, both of these will move more traffic in a, manager, in a manner that will allow motor vehicles and pedestrians alike better passage. We also continue to enhance connectivity through our trail and sidewalk network. This year, the Firefly Trail will extend beyond the loop to Hancock Industrial Road and finally see completion of the iconic bridge over Trail Creek that will offer breathtaking views of the surrounding landscape and provide a magnet to riders from near and far. As significantly, these expanding trails provide a safe recreation and access to amenities to thousands of children and families along the Winterville and Spring Valley Road corridors, in the Barnett Shoals and College Station Road areas, and to those near Commerce Highway and Newton Bridge Road, all areas in which safe access to recreation and foot or bike was previously limited. Similarly, we've completed new sidewalk segments in many dense residential areas that were historically undersupported, such as Baxter Street, King Avenue, and Magnolia Street. Just as we seek social and economic connections, these physical connections that allow us to easily stretch our legs and visit friends are a tangible reminder that we are creating in Athens for all residents. Another critical support for residents young and old is a clean environment. The SPLOST package approved by voters two years ago has ensured that more than $15 million over the next decade will be devoted to energy efficiency and clean energy production 
that will move the unified government of athens Clark County toward elimination of fossil fuels. We've also reached our initial goal of providing 20% of the county land mass as protected green space, areas that provide physical and mental health benefits for us and provide for habitat for the flora and fauna with which we're interdependent. In an action that will bear fruit for at least the next 100 years, we purchased this year a quarry next to the airport for future water supply. When the rivers are low, the water stored in the quarry will keep Athens homes and businesses with fluid flowing. Rock mining in the quarry will continue for the next 10 years, digging out the hole to a volume that in 2030 will rival the size of the Bear Creek Reservoir, which is shared by three other governments, whereas the quarry will be athens Clark County's alone to use. After 2030, we will fill it with water and make Athens far more drought-proof than it was when we were precariously close to running out of water in 2007, 2011, and 2016. As we enhance water quantity, we are also devoted to water quality improvements that will be realized via upgrades to our two largest water reclamation facilities to further reduce nutrient loads to the middle of North Oconee Rivers. Our plants already have many years of perfect compliance with the Federal Clean Water Act, and these upgrades will make our plant's performance even better. A related endeavor in resource recovery will be the new system for using recycled, non-potable water instead of drinkable water for industrial processes and for cooling systems, which will decrease the demand for potable water across the system. Thus, like the quarry, making athens Clark more drought resistant. I want to turn now to discussion of public safety, which has been such a critical and necessary part of the national and local conversation in recent months and years. First, I'm fortunate to note that 2020 saw more than a 6% overall reduction in crime in athens Clark County, continuing a 25-year trend of crime reduction. Bucking the experiences of many cities throughout Georgia and the nation, we realized a nearly historically low murder rate, along with a reduction in robberies and burglaries. Now, despite this overall positive trend, there were concerning rises in family violence and aggravated assault a person, among persons known to each other, as the stresses of this year found painful outlets. As we work toward comprehensive solutions to these problems, and I'll speak more about that in a minute, we will also continue an emphasis on reducing violent activity, including illegal use of firearms. At the end of the day, our success in public safety is not just because of a high quality police department, it's because we have an engaged and attentive community. And to further engage the entire community in a comprehensive approach to safety, next week I'll be naming a safety and justice advisory committee that will be supporting a new administrative officer who will report to County Manager Blaine Williams. Among the tasks of this office, we'll be looking beyond what is typically considered the criminal justice system to expand our recognition of safety enhancements to include what analysts would term upstream factors, meaning individual and collective physical and behavioral health, neighborhood quality, education, workforce development, and so many other contributors that are key to our long-term community health and safety. This office will seek data-driven, high-yield crime prevention efforts that can be sustained, drawing upon resources and partnerships throughout the Athens community and beyond. We will also continue to bolster criminal justice system responses that are equitable and supportive of human dignity and recidivism reduction and ensure graceful returns to the community for those who have served under incarceration or supervision. For decades, our society has saddled the police with the responsibility to be first responders for all of society's ills, including homelessness, poverty, mental health crises, and substance abuse. Over the last 20 years, athens Clark County has taken steps to begin to overcome this We've instituted and funded accountability courts, the Diversion Center, stronger pretrial monitoring, 
mental health care responder units pairing social workers with police officers, as well as preventative measures supporting neighborhood health and youth development. But there is so much more to be done to create a truly safe, truly just, and truly equitable community for all in Athens. So in the coming year, we'll be introducing a new team of behavioral health professionals to head off challenges before they reach crisis point and relieve our hardworking police department of unnecessary workload. At the same time, we are rolling out an enhanced public safety officer pay scale for police officers, for firefighters, and probation officers that will create greater attraction and retention for these very important jobs. It's important that we not artificially paint a zero-sum, all-or-nothing portrait of public safety. Bringing a more complete set of tools to the job of a strong community benefits each of us alongside benefiting the police department. As we provide much stronger preventative efforts, we can also acknowledge that the motorist rear-ended by a drunk driver or the mother who has her back door broken in by a burglar or the person who's experiencing assault all deserve a rapid response. The efforts of law enforcement and proactive community supports do not exist in opposition to each other, but in fact, these multiple pursuits strengthen one another. As I close, I'm gonna make a request of each of you. And it's a request I also hold myself responsible to pursue. I ask that through the disruption and uncertainty of this era in human history, you continue to offer welcome and grace to each other. We live in a time in which small divides between us can be amplified and weaponized in a way that makes us less able to work in common cause. We will not always come to agreement over every matter, but sharing a cup of coffee and a conversation will mean we recognize what we do share and deepen our own individual humanity. So rather than implore anyone to get off my lawn, let's provide an offer to come on up to the house to one another. The strength of the Athens community is our engagement with each other, our collaboration, and our efforts to better understand one another. And I thank you so dearly for joining me in this effort each and every day. Thank you.